So good morning, everybody. I'm June Tinsley, Head of Communications with NCBI. Um, and as part of this podcast series, I have the pleasure today of being joined by Annette O'Connell, um, who lives in Dublin. Thank you very much, Annette, for, for coming on board, having a chat with us today. To kick off, Annette, if you want to just kind of tell some of the listeners just a, a little bit about yourself and how you got in, involved with NCBI. OK, uh, my name is Annette O'Connell and I was diagnosed with macular degeneration about, uh, well, I got it in the right eye first about 10 years ago. And then I had excellent vision in the left eye 2020. And uh, that did me for about 10 years. And in the meantime, the one on the other side, on the right hand side, <coughs> deteriorated. So I have no vision now that I'm technically blind in that. Uh, I attend uh, Mark Cahill in uh, the Beacon, and he's very, very good, looks after me very well. I have injections once a month, uh, once every six weeks in the beginning, didn't suit me because I kept losing my vision more and more, even with the injections. And then uh, the, uh, he, he uh, decided to have the injections, give me the injections every once every month. So that's uh, suited. So that helped us a little bit. But over the last 12 months, after every injection, I felt it went down a little bit. So now I uh, really can't see the television. I can see faces, but not features very clearly. I can't see any color or background, just the faces. And uh, so then my son uh, rang me and he said, uh, he, actually, I think he rang the Council for the Blind on my behalf. And then he told me to to contact them again. And they've been very, very helpful. And uh, Alexa, uh, I can't do uh, escalators because I can't, I can't judge the steps. I can go up escalators because I can see the steps, but coming down, I can't. And I'm very, very nervous. I was never nervous of escalators before, never. So right. Alexa very kindly brought me out to Dunleary, and uh, I just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. So anyway, I just take lifts now. I can do without escalators in my life. So um, then uh, I decided uh, I can't let this get me down. I have to make compensations. So I bought an iPad and uh, I have wonderful angels in my nieces and nephews who look after me so well because both my sons are abroad. And uh, one of them came out here and uh, set up the iPad for me. First of all, uh, Beatrice set up my phone with a black background and white writing. That helped. I could read that. I could still read that. And then uh, my nephew set up the iPad. Uh, same thing, black background, white writing. He set me up with the Irish Times, which I can read uh, because it's slightly magnified and black background, white writing. Great. And he also uh, bought me Alexa. So I have two Alexas. I have one in the bedroom to which I dance. I go to dance classes on a Tuesday and uh, I dance down in the bedroom to Alexa. <laughs> and, and Alexa is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So I have Alexa. I have my, I, my uh, smartphone. I have the iPad. And now I have getting a fellow who's coming Wednesday to set up the television insofar as I just have to say, Alexa, turn on BBC One or Alexa, turn on um, the television or get me whatever station or get me Netflix. Not that I can see Netflix, actually. I find watching um, films very stressful, very stressful because I, I lose the plot and I can't see who's who or, or who's talking. So I uh, I now do audio books. So okay. uh, I just do my audio books most of the time. So I'm sort of slowly getting by in um, being able to to do things. Now, my husband is a lot older than I am, so uh, I can't expect him to do everything. So I do as much as I can in the house. Except cutting cutting stuff I have to be very careful of and uh, I'm ultra careful in around knives and things like that so uh, I'm managing, managing okay now uh, except walking now I go for walks and uh, I can start to see more in the distance middle distance is very problematic the long distance is still there a little bit 
that was in my good the eye that is I'm getting the ejections for now. That was a long distance I, I could see miles worth it. <clears throat> I don't see it far now, but I can make out things further uh, further away than near. Okay. So so that's it. I do. I go out for a walk every day for about thirty five minutes. Do about four or five kilometers. Uh, in Cabin Teeley Park because I know it blindly. Pardon the pun. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. And so, have uh, you tried any of the um, audio description movies on Netflix? I believe the Netflix have kind of increased their range of content to, to make sure that it is more accessible for people. Um, no, who are I didn't. No, I didn't know about that. No. Yeah, I believe yeah. some a, a, a large, maybe not a, all their catalogue, but certainly a, a significant volume of their catalogue has this audio description feature, which means that when um, there's no dialogue taking place on the scene, um, that it is still being audio described to somebody, so you can still kind of follow the plot with a bit more clarity. You should try it out. Yeah, that's a deadly thing. Because when I asked my husband, like what's that you know or I, sometimes I can't see anything on the television depending on the colour if it's dark I can't see anything and I'd say to him what's that by the time he starts to explain what it is it's gone on to another episode of the yes. <laughs> and I find that very stressful yeah no that's understandable so, um, but so I don't go on I don't go with that anymore <clears throat> no I could understand that um, but yeah. if that person's coming out to um connected up with you on Wednesday be sure to kind of ask them about that feature I'll ask him I, I will indeed I will ask him because this is what he's coming out for to set up this so that I can say I can audio say I can you know say to yes. Alexa turn on the television so I can say you know can you turn on the audio next exactly week? Yeah. Next? yeah I'm sure you just have to activate some feature on your remote control to um, activate the audio description but, um, I know what he'll do. He'll look blankly at me and say, say what's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope he doesn't. <laughs> and tell me, Annette, um, in, in terms of the, the treatment for AMD, as you said there, you have to um, go for monthly injections. For many people, yes. the thought having injections into your eye would be quite squeamish. Do you find it, a, is it a sore process? Is it? Oh, um, in the beginning, I was really, really... Uh... <laughs> traumatized each month i wouldn't sleep for two or three days beforehand now i yeah. don't mind it doesn't it doesn't hurt me that much it's more pressure and as he said as mark cahill said it takes three seconds to do okay and so if you can't bear the pain for three seconds <laughs> and it's not easing pain it's like pressure on your eye it's not right. it's not ag agonizing or anything you know well, and it's all done in it's all done in, in a couple of seconds Good. Well, that's very reassuring because in, in fairness, it, yeah. it, I'm sure for people listening, it, they might find the thought of that being quite squeamish. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I would naturally be squeamish about eyes, you know, especially about eyes. But um, I just, uh, you know, he just says, you look up and then he's it done. And I say, is it done? He'd say, yeah, it's done. You know. Great. It's not that bad. Not that bad. Oh, well, especially if it helps kind of maintain um, a level of vision. Oh. Absolutely, it's vital to, to uh, maintain the level of vision, vital. Because he told me I, could, I have to have this for the rest of my life. Because he went on holidays uh, last month, I didn't have it until the first day of the six weeks and my vision went down. So I'm going to tell him that on Wednesday. I have to go to him on Wednesday for the injection. So I'll tell him about that. I have to have it every 28 days because he said it's time sensitive. Right. That's one I have. Yes. Well, I mean, that, that's useful feedback for him to know that it, it has to be regimented every month for you and other patients oh, will have to be different depending on their conditions. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so, tell me, um, from an AMD point of view, do any, have any, did any of your uh, previous family have it? Never. Nowhere. There was 15 in my father's family and nobody okay. had it. And they all lived and nobody had it. OK, so it doesn't necessarily um, have a genetic component in your family. No, I wouldn't think so. My mother uh, died young of cancer and uh, my uncle died young and there was only two in that family. But I never heard of it, you know, of cousins or aunts or uncles and on that side of the family having it. There's no genetic link. No, 
No. <clears throat> I think it could be sun damage myself because we used to go to Canada every second year. And, uh, you know, sometimes you wear glasses, sometimes you wouldn't. You'd forget them or you mightn't have them on all the time. Yes. And I myself have a theory that it could be. Uh, now, nobody has told me that, but I think I wouldn't be surprised if uh, part of the component was sun damage. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I suppose it's um, it, um, it possibly play, played a factor. You, you just don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm only I'm only assuming, you know, that's not fact. I'm yes. only assuming. That's okay. That's okay. Um, and you, you mentioned there the the audio books that you avail of. Um, is that through the NCBI library as well? No, I don't know. Uh, you see, I I applied. I joined that, and then this thing came out. And of course, I couldn't see what it was. My husband hadn't a clue what it was. It looked like a whistle, so I sent it back. And somebody told me it's a uh, a stick, memory stick. Yeah, it's a USB but, stick. But I don't have a computer to to plug it into. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't have. I have an old old laptop that doesn't work. Right, because it 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 does fit into what's called it like a, a um a sonic player. It, it it's something that we can provide. Um, so if you're in touch with Beatrice about that, um, it would it would just give you access to a potentially a wider range of literature that you could be interested in. Oh yes, yeah, exactly. Now, and on TED Talks, I listen to and. Uh, on uh, Alexa, I listen to TED Talks at night, which is very good. So if anybody has an Alexa, tell them to tune into that. It's really good. It's a good tip, a good tip. Um, and I suppose just the, the last thing I was interested to see is in terms of how you've been faring with the whole COVID-19 and the cocooning and social distancing and stuff. And do you have any um, advice uh, for other people around it? Uh, not too bad because uh, my nieces and nephews would come here during the cocooning because they had to to do things for me. Yes. You know? <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else did I do? Just went for walks, really. I always went for walks. I mean, the apartment here is very, very well set up in so far as you can walk around the apartment because the the road is private. The whole area is private around, so you can walk right around the blocks. You know. Oh, so it's nice and so, safe. That, that, yeah, that was when you were down to two kilometres. Remember yes. that time? Yes. We could be back to that again, but however. Um, so we did that. And uh, no, I didn't find it too bad, really. No. Good. And then uh, a lot of friends on the phone and things, because we were all in the same boat. Don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Everybody was in it. Um, exactly. <clears throat> great. Well, sure. Listen, Annette, thanks for um, telling us your, your story. Um, and as I said, if you are interested in tapping into the NCBI library services, it can be done through that USB stick or you can download on your iPad um, a whole catalogue of audiobooks if you want to um, get access to those. The NCBI library has a um, an extensive catalogue of audiobooks. So um, All right. if you wanted to get access to those, you could um, contact the NCBI library directly or just when you're having a chat with Beatrice next, mention it to her yeah. and she can register you um, to get oh, access right. to the um, to the web platform that will unlock all these uh, publications to you. All right. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Good. So I good. hope this was helpful to you. Very much so. Thank you for your time. And I said it, yeah. the purpose of it really is just to highlight to others who may have AMD um, what, what is involved in the day to day living of somebody who has AMD. Um, yeah, you can you can do a lot of things, really, you know, electronically. <clears throat> I'm lucky that I'm electronically au fait, not too bad, you know. Just to encourage any listeners who do want to get in touch with any of our services, they can contact the yeah. info line at 1850 33 43 53. Um, and Annette, just to say thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. <laughs>